Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another wonderful Sunday at the Center for Spiritual Living. I'm so glad to see all of you. Wonderful to be together. Um, we're going to start you off with a couple of songs. Uh, okay. Oh, I'm Sarah. Mm. I'm Doug. And I'm Kay. That's Kay. <laughs> I invite you to stand if that's comfortable for you. Yeah, and we'll make some music. I see joy, I see peace, I see goodness surrounding me, I see love in every breath I breathe, I see God in everything, I see happiness, I see freedom, I see the beauty that lives in me, I see perfection in what life brings, I see God in everything. I feel joy, I feel peace, I feel goodness surrounding me. I feel love in every breath I breathe, I feel God in everything. I feel happiness, I feel freedom, I feel the beauty that lives in me. I feel perfection in what life brings, I feel God in everything. I know joy, I know peace, I know goodness is surrounding me. I know love in every breath I breathe. I know God in everything. I know happiness, I know freedom. I know the beauty that lives in me. I know perfection is what life brings. I know God's in everything. I know God's in everything. There is only one of us. In your eyes it's me I see. There is only one of us, you are my reflection, there is only one, there is only one of us, in your eyes it's me I see. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Doug Benson, and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in the heart of Las Cruces, where our vision is a world in loving partnership for the good of all. I am so thankful to see you here today. You bless and enrich me, not only me, but everyone who is here with your divine presence. So thank you for being here. Welcome to anyone visiting for the first time. Please help yourself to a packet of information. There's a gift certificate in there um, in our bookstore. To fill out the front form with an email to get on our email newsletter and to see the many events and opportunities happening here at CSL. And welcome also to you online. We're glad you're here as well. Yolanda Martinez. Yolanda, can you put your hand up? Woo. <laughs> She's arrived. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. And we're so glad you're here, and we're excited to have her here for our special music today. Following the service, she will lead a drumming circle. You are welcome to join in and or listen. She has brought some extra drums. If you don't have one, I see a bunch of them on the back uh, row there, too. Mary Lynn Brown is adjusting to have lost uh, a lot of her vision and may need some weekly rides here to the center and then back home on Mondays. Anyone who's willing to help her with rides, please see me after, or see Bonnie after the service. And then thank you also for the two people who have volunteered so far. Starting July 18th through August 15th, we will be offering our next accredited class titled Spiritual Principles and Practices. It's a five week or five modules long, two and a half hours per week. Is that on Thursdays? Yes, yeah, it's on Thursdays and the time. Four to six thirty. Uh, you can sign up in the social hall. Um, it says discover proven practices that bring spiritual principles into action, allowing you to manifest a desired goal or intention. Through this course, which offers spiritual practices and their methods that you can begin using now, we like that right now. You will begin to see results and changes in your life. The class will be based on the book "This Thing Called You" by Ernest Holmes. On Sunday, July 7th, will be our next board meeting after the service. And then on Sunday, July 21st, we will have a potluck and a town meeting where we will have an information uh, follow-up to the annual meeting that we had. There were some questions in the meeting. I think you're going to respond to those. Okay. Reverend Bonnie will be there as well. <laughs> we believe in the power of prayer, which we call spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer. Please fill out a prayer request card, which can be found in the pockets and the chair backs in front of you, and drop it into the offering plate, which will be going uh, around later. Alternatively, you can use our prayer request button on our website. Our prayer team, made up of practitioners and ministers from four local New Thought communities, will pray with you in regard to your request. In addition, should you have something you would like a quick prayer treatment after the service, the practitioners wearing the stoles around here, and, <laughs> and those who do not, uh, they'll be here to do a quick treatment with you if you'd like. And don't forget also to fill out a gratitude card for what you are grateful for. It's a doorway to blessing for all of us to share that uh, gratefulness. And now it's a time for song, silence, and prayer. Greatest good of all, greater good of all, greater good of all. I am here for the greater good of all, greater good of all. You are here for the greater good of all.
Let us pray. Spirit, God, you are first cause, the universal I am. Within cause is its corresponding effect. You are perfect mind and cannot conceive in perfect ideas. Hence the idea of man is held in the mind of God must be a perfect idea. The perfect man is the only man you know. As the whole, you cannot set one part in antagonism against another, for that would destroy the wholeness. Man cannot be against God any more than God can be against man in its self-expression. Therefore, I joy in you. I am as you are, whole and perfected within your cause and overflowing with life. Today, I meet my good. It knows me and will not let me depart from it. It presses itself against me in wondrous beauty and fills me a great surge of life. And so it is. Today's reading is a beautiful, expansive passage from the Science of Mind text, page 304, by Ernest Holmes. My opportunities are unlimited. There is a divine urge to express. It permeates me and fills all space and all people. All of my affairs are in its hands. To it are clearly visible the best ways, methods, and means for my greater expression. I leave my affairs in the hands of this principle, and I cooperate with it. Today, the possibilities of my experience are unlimited. The spirit flows through me, inspiring me, and sustaining that inspiration. I have ability and talent, and I am busy using them. This talent is divinely sustained and marketed under a universal plan of right action. Life lies open to me, rich, full, abundant. My thought, which is my key to life, opens all doors for me. I'm one with infinity, divinity. I realize this unity. I proceed on my way as one who knows that God does with him into an eternal day of infinite privilege. I have only to open the portals of my soul and accept that which is ready to express through me. Today, I fling these portals wide. Today, I am instrument through which life flows, and so it is. Today, we have a special guest, Yolanda Martinez, and she now is going to uh, share with us some special music. Oh, hello everyone. I am so honored and happy to be here back in my homeland of New Mexico. <laughs> the song that I want to share with you this morning is a beautiful song that was brought forth by someone else, but I love it because it speaks about Earth Mother, our ancient mother, our mother that we know is alive and struggling along with us in these times that we are in. So I honor her today and right now by singing this to her and you. Thank you. Ancient mother, I hear you calling. Ancient mother, I hear your song. Ancient Mother, I feel your laughter. Ancient Mother, I taste your tears. Hola, Mama, wahasukola. Hola, Mama, wahasukola. Hola, Mama. Hola, mama, tate kai. Sounds of laughter of children playing. 
the whispering wind singing in the pines. Overhead, the snow goose calling, and beneath our feet, chilling crystal mines. Oh, great bear down in the hollow. White goose flying high in the sky. Come circle around the sacred mountain. Joining hands, lift voices high. Father, Son, give us your light. Mother, Moon, help us be wise. Flowing waters quench our thirst now. Northern lights come paint our skies. Cricket singing, thunder rolling, splashing salmon will jump the fall. Listen closely to sounds around you. Ancient mother's voice will call. It lives within you and all around you. And an inner song of harmony. Hola, mama. Sorry, I'm fighting a little cold here, so my voice is so bit strong. Thank you. It is so good to have you back in this building. I heard about her when I first started here, and she had moved away, and so I'm so grateful to have her real presence. Your presence has been here all along, I believe, but it's so good to have you back in person, so thank you. Let's give her another round. Thank you so much. Beautiful and perfect for this morning. So good morning. I'm Reverend Bonnie, the community spiritual leader here at the center, and my pronouns are she and her. And it is my pleasure to be here. We, I feel like we're wrapping a lot of things up. I know for me, the anticipation of having Yolanda in this space has been many months now that we've been talking about it and planning to have her here. And I know for those that got to do the drum making yesterday, it was a great time to come together again and to have that sacred time and I look forward to the drumming after like she said there are drums so stick around you can watch or participate I am so excited so thank you for blessing this space with your presence and we're also wrapping up a month where we've been talking about holy boldness and for years I have been getting the science of mind magazine but I've also been getting Unity's magazine, and I'm not talking about their daily word. They actually have a magazine similar to ours with articles in it. And just this month, Unity magazine and the other favorite of mine, Spirituality and Health, have come together. They are now a joint magazine called Spirituality and Health, a Unity publication. So I'm pretty excited about that because I love both those magazines. And in the March-April magazine, I realized that the Centers for Spiritual Living are not the only New Thought community that are getting bold about social issues. There was an article in there by Reverend Ogan Holder, and it was titled Decolonizing New Thought. Very interesting article, worth reading. He quotes Cornell West as saying, justice is what love looks like in public. I'm going to say that again. Justice 
is what love looks like in public. When I read that, I was like, wow, I had to really think about what that means. And last week, Reverend Randy Granger talked to us and shared for us the What We Believe that's been published in the Science of Mind magazine since 1927, when it was first under the title of Declaration of Principles. It's the ideas and principles that we in religious science believe. And I started thinking, if justice is what love, a principle, looks like in public, what would all of our principles look like in public? How would that be expressed? As we are waking up to putting our principles into social practice and having our principles go public, it takes holy boldness to do that. Years ago, I heard many times and in many different places that religious science and new thought was the best kept secret around. And I think at that time, many of us set the intention to stop keeping it a secret to start bringing it forward, to start bringing it into our lives in ways that it became evident that we were living by these principles. And so I thought today it would be interesting to look at some of those principles and see how it is that we bring them public, we make them public. What do they look like when that happens? I believe that as we all come together to do this, um, I've had people ask me when I show them the what we believe in the new member ceremony, the new member class that I do, well, do we have to believe all of them? And you might have wondered that last week when Randy read them as well. If you ever read, we might wonder, do I have to believe all of that to be a member or be a new thought person or be practicing new thought? And I've always said no. That's not necessarily true because I think, as he said, sometimes we reword them. Maybe we have a different way of saying that same principle. And I know I personally still struggle with a few of them that I am not 100% sure I 100% believe, but it's my intention to live by these principles as much as possible. So I'm picking three that I resonate with the most to talk about, and I'm going to be asking you for what are your favorites as well. So the first one is, we believe the ultimate goal of life to be a complete freedom from all discord of every nature, and that this goal is sure to be attained by all. Wow. The idea that our ultimate goal is to be in complete freedom from all discord of every nature. I love that idea. I call that the peace principle. The other one that really resonates with me, we believe in unity of all life and that the highest God and the innermost God is one. And I refer to that as the oneness principle. And this one I take from the text. It's not one of the ones written in the what we believe. And it's, I call it the love principle. God is love. Love is, center of, is the very center of our being on page 238. Love points the way, page 43. Love casts out fear, page 238. And love is the grandest healing and drawing power of the earth, page 298. So I call that, of course, like I said, the love principle. So what are some of your favorite principles? What are some of the principles that you live by? And feel free to come in and sit down, or you can stand there, whichever you prefer. Yeah, you're welcome to be here. Thank you. Any principles, just shout out. What's one you like? Yes, Pat. Oneness, the oneness principle. Mm -hmm. What other principles do you like to live by or are central to your life? It is done unto you as you believe. Mm -hmm. There's that belief piece. Good. What else? Yes. Truth is one. The, the truth principle in there. Good. Any others? Yes. Walk your truth. Yes. Good. Okay. So as we think about the principles that we live by, I... Don't, I, didn't, I said that you don't have to believe every single one that was listed the way Ernest Holmes wrote them out in the What We Believe statement. But what I do know is that what you believe, like you said, what you believe is what ends up manifesting in your life. That's what ends up showing up in our lives. That's what we create with. Our belief system is how we create. 
Now, I have now come to say that not everything that shows up is something we necessarily created. Life happens. Things happen. But the majority, so I call it the tendency of manifestation. So as I teach, there's our teaching symbol beautifully personified there in the Zia symbol as well. That's that V going through the three layers, the top layer being spirit, moving through the law, the bottom layer being manifestation. And I tell people, if you want to know what you believe, look at what's manifesting in your life. Check out what's showing up, the tendency of manifestation in your life. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you can go back up and think about, well, what beliefs went through the law to create this in my life? Where are places that I might shift that thinking, change my belief, if I want to see a different picture manifest in the bottom, what shows up in our lives? And so I thought that about this in regard to social issues and what we call race consciousness. Ernest Holmes referred to what's going on in the culture around us as the race consciousness not racism, racial, but races in the human race. So as we think about that, and as we think about boldly taking our principles public, I think we need to consider what we're putting out into the consciousness of the larger race consciousness as well. Not just what we're planning in our own life, but what are we taking out there and planning in, planting in our society? In the same Unit Z magazine, there was an interview by Katie Kuntz. She interviewed someone named Pam Grout. And in the article, the interviewer said, playing the field, oh, the title was Playing the Field of Potentiality. And she said, so it's easier to seed your subconscious than to actually manipulate it. And Pam Grout responded, exactly. Keep it light, keep it fun. But that sentence really struck me. It's easier to seed your subconscious than to actually manipulate it. So we often say, change your thinking, change your life. Change what's going into that top part and change your life. And so I think a lot of the times I'm trying to manipulate my thinking. I'm trying to force myself to change my thinking. And that doesn't work so well, at least not all the time. But when she said, seed your subconscious, that felt a little gentler. I thought, oh, I could drop little ideas, little seeds in there, let them grow and help to transform my thinking, and then I'll get different results. So as we consider taking our principles and making them go public, consider seeding the subconscious, dropping little seeds for thought around your environment and just see them grow and shift instead of trying to change or manipulate people's thinking. Just drop little seeds of thought. So again, I want to go back to those three principles that I mentioned and they incorporate a lot of the ones that you mentioned. Freedom from all discord. As we think about this principle going public, I think about how do I affect change? How do I support the social issues that are dear to me? that I am concerned about or that I would like to see show up differently in our culture? Do I go about supporting them in ways that are free from discord? In other words, that are peaceful. How do I have discussions with people? How do my dialogues with other people look? How do I post my opinions on Facebook or other places? How do I support these causes and am I doing so in a way that is free from discord? I have to say that I marvel at people who can have these really intense and deep discussions with people and bring out different ways of thinking in a way that is still peaceful. I personally know that I have to learn some more tools in order to be more effective at doing that. This is an area that I would like to improve in. I want to be able to live this principle so I'm setting that intention, and I'm very aware that I would like to learn how to have these discussions in a way that are free from discord, that are respectful, and that I open more to listening and not being triggered into wanting to fight for my point. So I'm considering dropping seeds in my consciousness to that effect. My second principle, the one that is really dear to me, it's one you said, Pat, the unity of all life, the oneness principle. And I see that as meaning I'm one with the plants, the animals, and all other humans. 
It also refers to the outer God and the inner God as one. I'm one with God itself. And some people in our movement and in the world express this principle through being vegetarian or vegan. I know that's true of the Sikhs and the Buddhists who take it very seriously not to kill other living beings. And in the Hebrew scriptures, it says, thou shalt not kill. And some people take that to go beyond just humans, but to all living beings. My brother always says, nothing with eyes. So <laughs> that's how they determine. For me, I tend to live this more in terms of the environment. My focus is on how I live within the system of nature itself. How I am one with nature, I try very hard not to waste resources. I bring my consciousness to uh, being mindful about how I handle waste. I compost, recycle, that sort of thing. And I want to also be mindful of the energy that I use and how much energy I use and how I'm using it. I say this not to say one way is right or wrong, just to bring awareness to this idea of the unity principle and to ask you, how does the unity principle go public in you? How does it show up in you out in the world? For me, the unity principle and the love principle are very much connected. And I've shared with you many, many times that I'm very conscious of being one with others, even and including those who are different than me or who think differently than me and who might even make choices that I don't understand. That has been my goal over the last several years is to learn to listen and open to and try and understand what's going on in the world around me when I see people that appear to be very different than me. And my goal is to love everyone, as Ernest Holmes suggests that we do. And I believe Jesus did as well. Lately, I've heard people expressing frustration with what has come to be called political correctness. I think people have started to express frustration with trying to keep up with what is correct. What are the preferred terms, whether it's about race or gender expression, sexual orientation. I think sometimes people are like, oh, I'm so tired of having to learn something new, trying to figure out how to say the right thing. And especially when it requires us to shift in our thinking. When I was in college, I was told that women, especially feminists, had no sense of humor. Did anyone hear that along with me? <laughs> well, when someone is making fun of someone else, their culture and their beliefs, I don't think it's funny. I don't find that funny. And when people are making jokes that misrepresent or stereotype certain people, I also don't find that funny. And I've had people say, oh, come on, I'm just teasing. You have to admit it's funny. And I don't admit that because I don't think it's funny. And then they'll say, oh, come on, we're among friends. We don't have to be politically correct now. And for me, it's not about having to be politically correct. For me, it's about really understanding other people and being respectful of them and wanting to walk that way. My heart hurts when I'm not in congruence with that principle. When I found Ernest Holmes and when I found the words that he wrote in this text and many of his other books, it made my heart sing because I could relate. I was like, wow, somebody's writing what I've been thinking and feeling and putting it in words that I couldn't even use to express. So listen to this. Spirit is the father, mother, God, because it is the principle of unity back of all things. The masculine and the feminine principles both come from the one. Spirit is all life, truth, love, being, cause and effect. It is the only power in the universe that knows itself. The spirit could know nothing outside itself. That would be God and something else. Spirit is all, the center and circumference of everything that exists, both manifest and unmanifest. It has no enemies, no differences, no otherness, no apartness, no separation from itself. It is undivided, complete, and perfect within itself, having no opposites and no opposition. It knows only its own ability, and since it is all, it cannot be hindered in any way, shape, or manner. 
It is impossible for finite mind to comprehend such a complete life and power. In moments of real inspiration, we realize, to a degree at least, that God is all, that which has within itself all that really is, the life in everything and the love through everything, the one presence and the one infinite person, capital P person, whom we all call God or spirit, within this one all live. And I did not change the genders for this one. That's the way Ernest Thomas wrote it. And that just spoke to me in a way that just got me excited about this teaching and about the fact that there was already a movement that recognized these truths. <clears throat> so as we seek to understand others, and as we seek to learn about other cultures and ways of expressing the one is expressing, as we listen, we attempt political correctness, as it's said to be. And there's also another place, and this is more words of Ernest Holmes that I think resonate with this topic. One of the first things to do is to love everybody. That's what I meant when I said that's what he suggested that we do. If you have not done this, begin to do so at once, he said. <laughs> there is always more good than bad in people. And seeing the good tends to bring it forth. Love is the grandest healing and drawing power on earth. It is the very reason for being, and that explains why it is that people should have something or someone to love. The life that has not loved has not lived. It is still dead. Love is the sole impulse for creation, and the one who does not have love as the greatest incentive in his or her life has never developed the real creative instinct. No one can swing into the universe without love, for the whole universe is based upon it. To the one who hath loved much, much is given. We all may have many shortcomings, but if we love greatly, much will be forgiven us. And so I believe that as we attempt to understand other people, as we approach people from that place of love, much is forgiven, even if we make a mistake in what we say or how we say it. When we go with the intention of love, I do believe much is forgiven. And in my mind, if we let up on our awareness and purposely not do what is technically politically correct, we're letting up on and giving up on the principles of unity and love. As I remember to ask myself, what am I, is what I'm about to say kind, true, and needed? I believe that's how I honor the unity and love principles. And they go public through me by my choices and my behavior. Another principle, and this was written right before the reading that Doug did for us, so thank you, Doug, for reading that. Again, words of Ernest Holmes. Nothing moves but mind. God makes things through the direct act of becoming the things which it creates. This is what we do, for our thought becomes the thing of thought. The thought and the thing are one in reality. What we have and what we are is the result of the subjective state of our thought. Keep on subjectively thinking until the balance of consciousness is on the affirmative side and nothing can hinder it from demonstrating. This is inevitable, for this is the way the law operates. And then he went on to write the meditation that Doug read for us. And I call that the thoughts or things principle. That idea that what I think is important, and what I think about others is important. This principle, as it goes public through me, goes public as I mind my thoughts and words about others and how I interact with them. I appreciate this saying, when you know better, do better. I think a lot of us know better. And it's my intention to do the best that I can, to do better, knowing what I know, knowing my oneness with other people. These principles go public when I don't laugh along to go along. They go public when I state my discomfort when I hear something that just doesn't set right with me. They go public when I speak my truth. Somebody mentioned walking our truth, speaking our truth. 
They go public when I risk being seen as a humorless fuddy-duddy because I won't laugh along or think that that joke is okay. And it's not because I want to earn kudos with a certain group of people, and it's not because I'm a minister because I started this long before my call for ministry. It's because, like I said, it hurts my heart to not be in congruence with these principles. It feels so much better to stay in alignment with what I believe to be that principle of unity and the principle of love. And another principle that we live by and has been mentioned is the truth shall set us free, the truth principle. And that truth, speaking our truth, is how we also create and bring about our freedom. We can speak our truth in a way that doesn't create discord, but brings greater peace, but we still stay in our truth. And we've had the perfect example of what happens when we speak our truth, when we allow ourselves to bring the truth forward right here in this community. At the beginning of the month, I talked about the importance of verifying what we're hearing, what we're seeing, and finding what is the actual truth that's going on. And I shared with you about Karen's story of being scammed and how she needed to bring that truth forward. And what happened as she finally allowed herself to share the truth and move past the shame that came from having had that experience. And so she wrote a gratitude card. We encourage you all to write those gratitude cards as life shows up for you in a positive way. And there is a place to check if it's okay to share during the service. And she has checked that it's okay to share. So these are Karen's words. Strange how prayers are answered. I am finally angry, a step toward acceptance. People have been so generous financially. I'm not out of the woods, but I see light at the end of the tunnel through hope. Words of comfort truly are comforting. Counseling has given <clears throat> coping skills. I am so grateful. Karen Boyer. So I look at that as this community wrapped its arms around Karen, the loving arms of our community, and the principles of oneness and truth and love went public. And recently, many of our community have been wrapping their arms around Mary Lynn, as we mentioned in the announcement. She's going to be needing some more assistance with rides. They've been helping her downsize her, her belongings, and we have been helping her seek a new place to live. And Kelly told her during this process, where you are to live hasn't been revealed yet, but it will be. And that just touched my heart as well, because we are all supporting each other in these principles and in these beliefs. It's not just from up here that you're hearing them. We're sharing them with each other. That is making our principles go public. And as I've watched these principles go public through our community, I have actually witnessed pure joy as people have been able to serve each other in these ways. And I've witnessed laughter, because where there's joy, there's laughter. Not from making fun of someone, but by making fun with each other as we walk through life's challenges together. We are not humorous, humorless. It's just that our laughter comes from the joy of taking our principles public and not at the expense of other people. So again, some words from Ernest Holmes. Our thought and conscious receptivity receptivity differentiate this universal possibility by drawing it through our minds, causing it to flow into particular channels through the conscious receptivity of our different faiths. One state of consciousness will differentiate one kind of result, another mental state, a different manifestation. And so what that says to me is that all of the multiplicity, all the different ways that God expresses, all the different cultures and faiths and types of human beings, how we look, our gender, all of that. All of that is God expressing. And it shows up in different ways, but it's all the one that's moving in and through us. And I think that we do, on a deep level, understand the power of our thoughts and the power of our words. So when I read, justice is what love looks like in public, something in me moved. I was like, wow because I've often wondered what justice would look like. So I want to see all of our principles 
in public. I want to see what they look like in public. So as we wrap up this month on holy boldness, I hope that I've planted some seeds into the subconscious, maybe even into our conscious, for how it is that we might bring these principles and make them go public. So it is. So, thank you. And practitioners, please stand. And let's just surround this place with our love. And I'm so grateful we have some visitors here. And I know it's because Yolanda's drumming. So thank you for being here and listening to us and sharing this time with us this morning. Let's just go within. And recognize however it is that spirit expresses in and through you. That you are a magnificent expression of love, of peace, of unity in this world. And who you are and how you are brings that forward makes it public, makes it a light in other people's lives and in the world. And so I'm grateful for each individual expression that has showed up here today. I'm grateful for how each one of us is a light out in the world, how we bring truth, how we bring wholeness, how we bring love, how we bring lack of discord or peace into the world. And at these times, we just open our hearts even wider to allowing that to be so. We allow ourselves to just unite with all that we possibly can, bringing as much love as possible into every situation. And so in gratitude, I just release these words and these intentions, knowing that it's already so in that great mind of God, as we say together, and so it is. Thank you, and Yolanda. <laughs> Okay, so just just the uh, just show just the words. The words yeah. Okay. Well, I could bring those up, right? Now. And as you know, we made some wonderful drums yesterday. So I would like to invite all my drum makers to grab your drum and come up here to be honored. The drum is such a powerful, wonderful instrument. It grounds you into Earth Mother and balances you. It helps you to shift. It helps you to heal. So what I would like to do, and they have not heard the voice of their drum that they created. They're like their new babies, you know. <laughs> you guys find room here? There we go. Good. I'm glad you all made it. Yay. <laughs> yes. And again, we're going to honor Earth Mother. And one of the favorite songs that the kids and everybody love is Mother, I Feel You. It's important for us to connect with our Earth Mother as we're walking upon her feeling her energy coming up through our feet, feeling her heartbeat, and that is through the drum as well. So let's just start drumming and then we'll start singing, okay? Join in and feel. 
feel this wonderful energy. Thank you so much. <laughs> do another one? <laughs> do you have another one you can do? They said sure. encore. <laughs> yeah. Let's do um, another chant that's easy to do, ancient altar. <laughs> Goes like this. yo eh hi yo
go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We could feel, could you all feel that? I can feel it up here. It's great. Thank you very much. Yay. So more of that after the service, you can all join in. I'm still sweating. <laughs> Thank you so much, Yolanda. Thanks for bringing your energy, your wisdom, your guidance, your talent into this room. Yes, we'll have you back now that you live in town. Yay, everybody, let's just thank you, Alonda, one more time. Thank you. <clears throat> well, now is that time when we think about giving back to the center where we have all these diverse ways of expressing. I'm so grateful. And one of the things that we haven't done in a long time is actually pass the plate. We've decided we can do that again. We do have hand sanitizer in the back. If anybody's concerned, you can sanitize your hands after we pass the plate. But we're going to do that because we want to just see that generosity flow this morning. And 10% of everything that comes into this center goes out into our community. And this month, it goes to SNAP. This is the last Sunday. It goes to the Spay Neuter Action Program, whose mission it is to prevent the suffering and death of dogs and cats due to overpopulation in Doniana County. So that's where 10% of the tithe today will be going. So at this time, let's say our blessing together as you have your offering in your hand. You can bless it. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, in me. And as we sing, I am so blessed, you can help to pass that plate along. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. I am so blessed, I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. Going to give thanks as it comes forward. Thank you, Doug and Bill. Thank you, everyone. We know that as the abundance flows through us, it flows out into the world. This is a symbol of how it is principles work in our life. The same happens with love, the same happens with unity, the same happens with all the principles that we live. We watch them flow through us out into the world. And so I am so grateful. I know these are blessed and they continue to bless beyond what we can even imagine in these rooms. And so it is. Thank you. And so let's sing our closing song. What are we singing today? Go out and shine. Okay, let's get the drums in. Surround this room if you've got totally. drums. Go out and shine is a great song to drum to. I was hoping that's what you picked. So if anybody else wants to grab a drum, feel free. Okay, ready?
this one hand one heart want to change make a start we're one big family what's good for you is good for me come on and go out and shine your light you know the time is right you gotta go out and shine your light go out and shine Shine your light and keep on drumming as well. <laughs> You'll be drumming in here with Yolanda, but there's also coffee and cookies. You can go and come back however you see fit. Have a great week and go out and shine that light. Thank you.